ओके इन आवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी आई हैव एक्सप्लेन्ड यू विथ द कंसेप्ट ऑफ ग्लोबल अलाइनमेंट एंड लोकल अलाइनमेंट वॉट इज पेरवाइज अलाइनमेंट राइट सो नाउ वी वुड मूव अवर डिस्कशन टूवर्ड्स मोर रिफाइन टॉपिक्स ओके नाउ वी वुड टॉक अबाउट कि वॉट आर द मेथड्स दैट आर अवेलेबल दैट वुड इनेबल यू टू परफॉर्म सर्च पेरवाइज सिक्वेंस कंपेरिजन okay and thus we are going to study what are three different methods to perform pairwise sequence alignment okay so uh, these three popular methods that exist that people usually use for aligning the two sequences that include dot matrix analysis or uh, dot matrix method we call it another popular approach is something called as a dynamic programming algorithm and for a database searching uh, we use word method or k-tuple method okay so uh, this word method or k-tuple method is used for database searching and uh, these two methods are used for individual alignment okay so first uh, we would deal with dot matrix analysis method being the simplest one then we would learn what is dynamic programming algorithms for aligning the two sequences and uh, when we end up with this thing we have in a background to understand word or k-tuple method which is implemented in database searching okay so uh, let us start out with dot matrix method or dot matrix analysis so this dot matrix analysis method was proposed by uh, these two gentlemen aj gibbs and j a mcintyre back in 1970s okay so what new method that they have proposed well that begins uh, with comparing the two amino acid uh, uh, two amino acid uh, residue sequences or uh, you can also uh, have nucleotide sequences and uh, in this method of comparison what you do is that you are supposed uh, to draw a graph with one sequence in this case we are considering the nucleotide sequences you are supposed to uh, write the first sequence being compared across the page okay and another sequence being compared on the uh, left hand side down on the left hand side of the page okay so in this way whatever matrix that would generate is called as contact matrix so whatever space that would be generated between these two sequences we call it as a contact matrix okay why do we call it as contact matrix i would like you know why okay so <coughs> uh just a minute i just want to make sure that i yes okay where were we we were talking about uh the contact matrix as such okay so when you arrange the two sequences in this way what happens next is that whenever uh, you observed that uh, well there would be now columns in this way and there would be rows okay now for the sake of simplicity i have not shown the columns and rows in this contact matrix okay so next step in this dot matrix analysis is that in whatever box where you figured out that there is similarity between the two sequence you place a dot over here and all of the dots that are present in your contact matrix would represent the similarity between the two sequences as such okay so whenever a similar letter appeared in both the sequences 
at the intersection of these uh, two uh, corresponding sequence position you are supposed to place a dot okay a dot is supposed to be placed at the intersection of the corresponding sequence position where you have identified the similarity okay so in this way you would generate something called as contact matrix with different uh, dots at different position wherever there is similarity between the two given sequences okay so once you do that next thing what you are supposed to do is to scan for the series of dots that form the diagonal so each and every dot uh, won't be of your interest you would be interested in finding out a series of dots that forms the diagonals okay and these diagonals would eventually reveal your similarity now how is that okay let's well, say so for example in this contact matrix based on these different dots you find this continuous diagonal and this diagonal now represent the similarity between this sequence 1 and this sequence 2 that you are trying to compare okay and how is that this dot would correspond the alignment of c from sequence 1 with the alignment of c in sequence 2 uske baad mein next dot in the diagonal is this dot that corresponds alignment of t from sequence 1 with subsequent uh, t in sequence 2 then the next dot correspond alignment of a in sequence 1 with the same a in sequence 2 similarly we proceed on therefore we say by finding out such diagonal series of dot in diagonal you can end up saying that this much region from my sequence 2 is similar to this much region in my sequence 1 okay usually this this diagonals would represent the similarity between two sequences okay so this uh, dot matrix method does reveal the presence of uh, uh, you know insertions or deletion between sequences iske iske upar thodi der baad aate hain theek hai so this is one of the way by which you can identify if the sequences are you know uh, if the sequences are uh, similar or not based on the length of the diagonal one more feature of this uh, of this uh, method is that you can identify multiple ways by which or wherever there is sequence similarity right we'll say for example this much region of your sequence of first sequence the end of the first sequence matches with the beginning of the second sequence what do you call this the same way right the end of one sequence matches with the end of another sequence or the beginning of first sequence right यहाँ पर भी जी सी है यहाँ पर भी जी सी है सो इन दिस वे एवरी पॉसिबल कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ सिमिलरिटीज कैन बी डिटेक्टेड यूजिंग दिस डॉट मेट्रिक्स मेथड ओके इट विल गिव यू ऑल द पॉसिबल अलाइनमेंट्स और ऑल द पॉसिबल सिमिलरिटीज बिटवीन द प्रोवाइडेड गिवन सिक्वेंसेस वाई what how many number of diagonals are there that would indicate that much region of the two sequences are similar okay so next thing that you should consider is that this dot matrix method would also reveal the presence of insertions or deletion between the sequences why because if there are insertions or deletion what we call them as indels that would eventually shift the diagonal either horizontally okay if such is the case you can say that there is insertion or deletion okay or the other way around diagonally can also be shifted vertically to ye ho gaya vertical shifting okay and uh, it can you know also be shifted uh, 
uh, vertically or uh, horizontally right so now comparing a single sequence so you can compare sequence 1 with sequence 2 okay or you can also perform self comparison on one end you would have sequence 1 and across you would have the same sequence 1 so that you can now perform the self comparison okay now if you perform a self comparison you would be able to detect if there are repeat region in your sequence if there are inverted repeat or forwarded repeat or if there are paleodromic sequences present in what order those uh, repeat sequences are there you can identify uh, such features in your sequence okay in this way you can identify tandem genes you can identify if there are repeated domains in your protein sequences okay if your sequence in comparison do possess uh, a low complexity uh, low complexity region okay low complexity region correspond to repeated sequences as such okay uh, many of the nucleotides uh, nu much of the genome is of low complexity region we'll say for example where it is report uh, repeatedly having a single amino acid residue uh, that are you know repeated indefinitely for a very long stretch we call such sequences as low complexity region okay so such features can be detected if uh, you perform uh, you know self comparison okay one more uh, idea that instead of finding similarity between the or you can say identity between the two sequences what you can do you can also find out complementarity between the uh, given uh, sequence base pairs okay so if you are able to locate the complementarity then uh, this concept can also be used in determining how rna might fold if it is an RNA sequence okay in previous case what we have given we have given a dot where similar sequence has occurred okay if this sequence is RNA sequence and if you want to figure out how the RNA might fold then you would check out for complementarity okay complementarity complementarity kya hota hai? a pairs with T and G pairs with C in DNA okay so if it is RNA sequence then uh, and if it is an RNA sequence and you want to figure out if uh, if how that RNA might fold then you would find out uh, where are the complementary uh, dots and wherever you find complementarity you would place a dot okay so in this way you would place a dot at this region where there is complementarity between G and C okay and in this way if you figure out uh, diagonals in such a way then you can say ki that is how the RNA might fold okay and form the double uh, uh, double standard structure so in this way there are multiple application of uh, your uh, dot matrix method okay so uh, here are some of the typical dot plots that you might recognize uh, while you perform such dot matrix method analysis or, or dot match method okay so if you get a diagonal which is continuous from uh, one end to another end that would mean that you have got perfect match between sequence t1 and sequence t2 okay now if you find uh, you know a series of uh, parallel uh, uh, diagonals you can infer that uh, there are repeated sequence in uh, repeat uh, there are repeated regions in your sequence t1 and sequence t2 okay now if you find a cross of diagonal in your uh, dot plot uh, you can then determine that the two sequences are paleodromic to each other okay so now if the cross is from one end to another end you can say that it is a complete paleodrome or 
if one of the diagonal misses in between you can say that these two sequences are partial pa uh, palindrome of each other okay you can also detect if uh, the sequence contains uh, this micro satellite or mini satellite region okay this uh, satellite region are uh, you know uh, the regions in your dna molecule which contains repetitive dna okay and depending on how the uh, sequences are repeated uh, and the length of the repetition you can classify them as micro satellites and mini satellites okay if you get such discontinuous diagonals you can say that these two sequences sequence t1 and sequence t2 are homologous to each other we would talk about homology in more details uh, in our subsequent lectures okay so if such is the case if you find out discontinuous diagonal you can say that these sequences are homologous to each other and of course you can detect insertions as well as deletion based on uh, where exactly the gap is uh, placed in your two diagonals whether it is uh, whether it is placed horizontally or whether it is placed diagonally okay ye aisa bhi ho sakta hai okay sorry aisa bhi ho sakta hai aur dusra kaisa ho sakta hai the other way out horizontally or diagonally okay so uh, the advantages of dot matrix methods are obvious okay so this dot matrix analysis can easily reveal the presence of insertions or deletion in the sequences why because the position of the diagonal would shift with respect to each other and uh, you can identify various forms of repeat that i have mentioned okay another advantage is that it reveals the presence of all possible uh, similarities that can exist between the two sequences okay and the biggest advantage would be although this method would reveal all the possible alignments that i have shown over here like as i have shown over here it can detect all the possible alignment whatever diagonals that would be present in your sequence that would indicate uh, the region of similarity between the possible region of similarity between the two sequences okay so how many number of diagonals are there that many number of uh, similarities or uh, possible alignments are possible okay in the given two sequences that is what one would infer okay although this method would reveal all possible alignments but uh, it would not in itself state which one is the optimal alignment okay and this is one of the biggest drawback of uh, dot matrix method or dot plot method okay but of course there are some other way around other calculation that are needed to be done after you have revealed those diagonal and you can obtain the optimal alignment but those uh, steps are needed to be done additionally after uh, figuring out the dot plots as such okay and and that would cost you some uh, different uh, uh, different time okay uh, <coughs> now this one being the biggest disadvantage uh, you know uh, what if we come come up with uh, some techniques that uh, you know that overcome this disadvantage okay and the answer to uh, this problem is that you can align the two sequences using dynamic programming so as to come up the advantage of uh, finding out the local or uh, what uh, sorry to find out uh, the disadvantage to overcome the uh, you know the problem of uh, missing the optimal alignment okay so now whatever new method that we develop it is necessary that it should have all the strong points of your previous method as well as it should take care of whatever drawbacks are uh, were there in your previous method so it should not happen that uh, one of the drawback is solved but it creates new problem that were solved by the previous method okay 
so uh, the thing is that whatever dynamic programming algorithm that uh, we would learn it should be able to do all the things that uh, dot uh, dot matrix method was able to do additionally it should be in position to identify which one is the optimal alignment okay so these were the uh, expectation of a new method before dynamic programming algorithms were uh, designed and before they were implemented and coded okay so now let us revise first the sequence alignment by dot matrix is only advice if one knows that the two sequences are quite similar to each other so dot matrix ka use karna hai when are we supposed to use this dot matrix method when you know that these the two sequences that are uh, that you are working on well those are similar to each other okay so what are the drawbacks now the drawbacks can be this dot matrix method does not resolve similarity if two sequences are interrupted by stretches of region which are not similar well let's say for example if you are trying to align the two sequences we'll say for example sequence 1 and sequence 2 and if these two sequences are similar in this much region and majority of sequence is left and uh, only there is similarity between this small stretch and then there is a big stretch after which there is similarity between this small stretch so now if the similarity between the two sequences is interrupted by such a large region where there is no similarity between these two sequences well in such a way you would end up finding diagonals in such a way that uh, you won't be able to you know you won't be able to figure out if these diagonals are uh, to be considered or not if this is the case if there uh, the if the similarity is inter interrupted by non similar region okay so that is one of the disadvantage of using dot matrix method okay as we have already discussed it cannot state which one is the optimal alignment okay third one is that if the two sequences contains lot of insertions and deletions your diagonals would be broken into so much pieces that it would be very difficult for you to figure out ki okay this much is the region of my similarity between sequence 1 and sequence 2 okay it cannot detect similarity if the two sequence contains more number of insertions and deletions so diagonals would split into multiple uh, ways okay split into uh, many different small fragments and it would become difficult for you to realize ki which region is similar okay so now the objective is to devise another method that will overcome all of this drawback okay and another method that was proposed later on in say for example early 80s was this dynamic programming approach for aligning the two sequences okay so now in such an alignment procedure by using dynamic programming okay so what you do is that you represent your alignment by writing the sequence on successive lines okay this is sequence a you have written in one, first line and in the sub successive line you have written another sequence okay so now when you try to align the two sequence using dynamic programming these matching pairs are placed in a same column as you can see over here mismatching pairs are also placed in the same column as you can see over here okay but they are placed as a mismatch over here you are placing it as a match this is a mismatch okay and gaps are allowed at appropriate position okay these are gaps that are allowed at appropriate position well these are uh, you know postulates of your dynamic programming algorithm okay so this is what is done okay but uh, now if you want to go in uh, this way the problem would arise uh, if you try to find out an optimal alignment jo apne ko karna hai okay uh, 
uh, you would also have to consider uh, whether you have uh, taken into consideration all possible matches all possible mismatches all possible insertion and deletion in either of the sequences and uh, therefore considering all these four uh, possibilities huge amount of time and memory would be required if you want to align the two sequence by this particular uh, said method and if you want to consider all the possible matches and mismatches insertions as well as deletion that would take a lot of time and memory okay well say so for example if you want to align the two protein sequences of well say 300 amino acid residue length which is you know a standard cytosolic uh, protein okay uh, if your two protein sequence contains 300 amino acid residue and you want to um, you want to align these two sequences using dynamic programming considering all possible matches mismatches insertions and deletions okay it is estimated that you would have to make a simple uh, uh, you would have to make uh, 1088 comparisons uh, in order to just consider all possible matches mismatches insertions and deletion okay and uh, you know uh, this would slow down uh, your computer program or this would slow down your output results as such okay so now in order to simplify these things uh, what needleman and wunsch did in 1970s at the end of 1970s and they proposed this algorithm in uh, around 80s is that uh, what they did is that they broke the problem of uh, considering everything at every time uh, instead of considering everything at every time what they did that they decided to break the problem into small pieces and solve the small pieces individually and find the solution to you know small pieces individually okay so what they said that instead of aligning these two sequences considering everything at all the time we would start out at one end we would start out at the one end of the alignment and when we move on to the next residue pairing or next residue comparison when we move on to include the next residue comparison there we would decide whether to give a match whether to give a mismatch whether to give insertion or whether to give deletion okay and then subsequently move on to the next positions okay so start at the end of sequence compare two amino acid residue pair at a time and then move ahead one amino acid pair at, at a time rather than comparing everything with everyone else at a time okay so uh, and while you move on with various combination of matches mismatches insertions and deletions were allowed to be considered okay so this type of approach in computer uh, language is called as dynamic programming okay start at one end and consider all the possibilities while you move on this type of approach is called as solving the problem by dynamic programming okay so in this way by implementing dynamic programming this middleman and gunja approach generated first every possible pairs of matches every possible pair of mismatches single insertions are to be considered and single deletions are to be considered okay so ye these features that were already present in your dot matrix method were taken care by dynamic programming method as well but now we have to consider the drawbacks that were present in the previous method that is of finding the optimal alignment optimal alignment kaise ka find out karenge ye ab tak apne ko nahi pata tha so what dynamic programming people did is that they introduced the concept of scoring system in the alignment 
okay or they introduce the concept of using the scoring function in the alignment okay so the idea is when you end up comparing these two sequence sequence a and sequence b this is one possible alignment of sequence a and b you would give it some score x there is some another possibility of alignment between the same two sequence a and b but now you would give say some score y for this possible alignment okay and whatever score which is higher that score containing alignment would be called as optimal alignment okay as like dot matrix method we would generate all possible alignment okay but what have we introduced over here we have introduced the concept of scoring function or scoring system by which whatever possible alignments that you have generated between a uh, two uh, sequences you would go on scoring them and the alignment which has got maximum score we can consider it as optimal alignment okay so the objective of scoring the alignment was to determine the best alignment and the best alignment would be the one which has got the highest score and hence you solve the problem of scoring the or you can solve the problem of finding the optimal alignment okay so uh, here is uh, you know a simplified uh, version of middleman and bonge algorithm okay which we are going to study after a few lecture okay so now the idea of giving you this small example is to just give you an idea of how things would work okay so if you want to align the two sequence globally using middleman and wunsch uh, algorithm okay we'll say for example uh, we would try to align these uh, two sequences g a t c t a with another sequence g a t c a and we want to perform this alignment using dynamic programming algorithm that is proposed by this middleman and wunsch so if you end up aligning any two sequences uh, what would happen is that you are supposed to perform three basic steps first step that you need to do is that you first need to create a comparison matrix next you need to transform the comparison matrix whatever you have created and third you are supposed to perform trace back of the transform uh, transformation matrix okay so how these things is how these things are done i would just give you a simple example okay and i should uh, tell you that this is just hypothetical example the real needleman and wunsch uh, algorithm the real steps that are involved in uh, needleman and wunsch algorithm for aligning two sequences are way too complicated that is what we are going to deal with in the next uh, few lectures okay but to get you started out with understanding the concept of what things happen in such needleman and wunsch dynamic programming algorithm i have designed a simple uh, simple illustration okay so what was the first step the first step was mentioned is all about you need to create a comparison matrix okay so when you create a comparison matrix first you would have to you know uh, generate a contact matrix between these two uh, sequences that you are dealing with okay so uh, now what you do when you create a comparison matrix uh, what you do is that uh, you simply in this case you would simply give a score of 1 wherever you find uh, identity in uh, your contact matrix and you would give a score of 0 wherever you find mismatch okay so yahan par 
कंपेरिजन मेट्रिक्स बनाने का सिंपल लॉजिक क्या है कि वेर एवर देयर इज सिमिलरिटी और आइडेंटिटी यू ऑप्टेन इन द कॉन्टेक्ट मेट्रिक्स गिव द स्कोर ऑफ वन ओके एंड वेर एवर देयर इज मिसमैच यू गिव द स्कोर ऑफ जीरो दिस इज अ सिंपल रूल एंड माइंड यू दिस इज अ सिंपलेस्ट स्कोरिंग स्कीम दैट यू माइट डेवलप ओके वेर एवर देयर इज मैचिंग गिव द स्कोर ऑफ वन वेर एवर देयर इज मिस मैचिंग गिव द स्कोर ऑफ जीरो इन एक्चुअल निडल मैन एंड गुंजल गोरिधम थिंग्स आर अ बिट डिफरेंट दैट वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट लेटर ऑन ओके बट फॉर द टाइम ऑफ फॉर द टाइम बींग फॉर द सेक ऑफ सिंप्लिसिटी we have now devised a new scoring system in which wherever there is identity identity we would give one wherever there is mismatch we would give zero in this way uh, there should be a one over here as well okay i i i kind of by mistake uh, give some different uh, zero over here okay a matches with a so there should be one over here as well okay so in this way you create something called as comparison matrix okay so next step is what the next step is whatever comparison matrix that you have created we need to transform the comparison matrix and the resulting matrix that is obtained after transformation is called as transformation matrix okay so what are the rules for transformation in our case now our simple case now we would move from one end of the comparison matrix to another end of comparison matrix and when we move if we find out that there is similarity as compared to the previous uh, previous score we would increase it by one we would move diagonally down okay so our uh, comparison matrix starts with one okay then we have moved diagonally and opt and we ended up at this position this position correspond to alignment of a with a yes there is a match and therefore we increase the previous score by 1 to get 2 then again we move diagonally we end up over here and then we test if there is a uh, identity between the two amino acid residue or uh, uh, characters over here yes there is what there is identity so we add 1 to the previous score we end up with increasing the score again by 1 again we move forward we compare okay and we again find out that there is a similarity between two sequence at this position as well therefore again we would increase the score by one and we end up over here with a increase score now if we move on to the next position that is over here we would end up with a mismatch where t is not identical with a okay so at such position now you have got an opportunity to decide whether i can give a gap at this position and if i skip this t and include next position that is over here okay if i skip this column and move my align alignment over here which would correspond to this particular position in my contact matrix that would indicate alignment of a with a okay and this is also a match and hence you can still increase the score but now since you have provided a gap over here you would have to subtract some gap penalty from the final score that you have obtained to yahan par final score kya tha 5 but how do you obtain the final score of 5 by giving gap somewhere in your alignment okay and when you give the gap you would subtract some gap penalty 
from the final score okay well let us not talk about uh, this gap penalty and everything we would talk about the real gap penalties when we align the two sequences and in this way we say that you have transformed the comparison matrix that you have generated in the previous step okay so this is called as the transformation matrix the third step that you need to do is to perform the trace back of your transformation matrix so ye jo transformation matrix taiyar hoga you need to perform trace back by identifying from where that values are obtained okay so this is how it would work you would end up starting with the highest score that is 5 the highest score is 5 that would correspond alignment of a with a a with a this has got the score of 5 then you have provided a gap in front of t this is where the gap is to 5 ke pehle gap ke pehle which was the highest score we have got 4 which correspond to alignment of c with c this is the alignment of score of 4 which correspond to alignment of c with c then this 4 is derived from this 3 which correspond to the alignment of t with t this then it is derived from the score of 2 which correspond to the alignment of a with a here this is derived from the initial score of 1 which correspond to the alignment of g with g okay the final score of this alignment is what 5 but since you have given a gap over here you would subtract some gap penalty and whatever score would you end up whatever x is the score you can consider it as the score of your alignment so let's well, say for example if you end up with another alignment scheme like over here or like over here okay this alignment would also have say some some score y this alignment might also have say some score z so of these all possible alignment x y and z scoring alignments whichever number is greater you would consider that alignment as an optimal alignment okay so mind you that this is just a hypothetical example that i have created for you to understand the basic concept of where and when transformation matrix comes into place where and when you are supposed to create a comparison matrix there are certain rules that are needed to be followed for transformation of your comparison matrix there there is necessity of tracing back your score right there is necessity of uh, subtracting some gap penalty if you have given one well this is the basic example that i have drawn okay the actual uh, rules for calculating uh, the comparison matrix the rules for proceeding for the transformation of the comparison matrix and trace back are uh, way too complicated and that is what would be the aim of our subsequent few lectures okay so uh, in this way these are the basic steps that are involved in your needleman and gunge algorithm if you are trying to uh, align the two sequences globally okay so one more thing that i have left uh, is that uh, well say for example i would like to make clear that if you have if you have been provided with a two sequence sequence 1 and sequence 2 if you want to align these two sequences globally you would be using needleman and wunge algorithm okay similarly if you have been provided sequence 2 and sequence 3 and your objective is to align these two sequences locally then you would be using smith and 
waterman conversion okay so if you want to perform global alignment you would be using middleman and wunge algorithm if you want to perform local alignment you would be using smith and waterman algorithm okay so whatever steps that i have briefly described you just to give you an idea of the concept of middleman and wunge algorithm that is implemented if you want to align the two sequences globally okay so always remember these things these things are usually asked in your competitive exam okay if you want to align globally what is the algorithm that you might be using whether you would be using middleman and wunge algorithm whether you, whether you would be using smith and waterman algorithm whether be whether you would be using musinov uh, jacobson algorithm uh, well whatever dynamic programming method okay so uh, the next topic is uh, scoring matrix and i think uh, we will uh, uh, we will uh, reserve this topic for the next uh, session okay so this is all i have for you guys today okay and i am stopping this recording